What's up guys and welcome back. Trent's garage is a mess. I know in the last video we like had everything organized and it was gonna be absolutely beautiful, but in a roundabout kind of way when you're working in other parts of the garage to try and finish them when they're under construction, things get thrown into this workspace. I got new studs that are gonna go into the axle, so hopefully we'll be able to get our new knuckles uh, that I made the giant holes in fixed and get our new bracket put on but I don't have those. They're supposed to be delivered today, which means I wouldn't be able to film this until tomorrow, but we're gonna be busy tomorrow, so we're gonna do a little bit of work today. I think what we're actually gonna do is try and use the cherry picker or the engine hoist to get the engine lifted up and put it inside our frame rails up there. We're gonna lower the truck down, get the positioning of the engine in place, and then try and get our transfer case and everything mounted and get the engine suspended in its place where it's going to rest in between the frame rails. Then I'm actually gonna go and buy some motor mounts, some like uh, tubular motor mounts with bushings so that I can do some cutting of the motor mounts that are on the engine right now and get them mocked up so I can actually get them mounted on the frame rails. This is going to be very exciting, uh, but it's also probably gonna be a struggle because getting the engine with the transmission mounted on it in between the frame rails is gonna be a challenge. So we're gonna move some stuff around and get ready and then we're gonna give it a shot. This is just tacked in place. So I don't really know if I knock that cross brace out if it's gonna like mess with stuff. Do the old boing boing? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I guess if I cut the tacks on this piece of square tubing and then I take it out, if I put it in the back, like after where the transfer case is gonna go and tack it in place back there, that might be okay. All we can do is try it. Didn't do any funkiness when it came out either. Uh -uh. I don't really know if I like need to cross brace this at all. It like basically did not even move a millimeter when I pulled that cross brace out. So it's probably fine. We can always like jack it up and manipulate it and like get it square if it comes out of square again. And we're not actually mounting the engine today. We're just getting the engine in place and lowering the truck down to the right position. I still have to buy the mounts so that I can actually cut them all out and make the mounts, but Hopefully, uh, this isn't a mistake, but I think it'll be okay. Yeah, yeah. See if the chassis fits around the engine. I'd like to lower this lower, but I'd have to move another tire. I still need to put the transfer case on the back of the transmission, and I don't really want to do that right now because it's going to make it like super back heavy. And I would like to get this in place to get the engine mounted on the frame rails, but then once I do that, getting the transfer case on is going to be severely difficult. And uh, I'm not sure if that's a good move yet or not. All right, so in order to save us a lot of struggling and difficulty later on trying to do the transfer case like up underneath the truck, especially if I have to do it with the truck at this height, I would rather do it now. So I'm gonna grab the adapter from Advanced Adapters and try and get it mounted onto the back of our transmission, try and find all the bolts that are necessary for that. We're gonna unbox our Atlas transfer case, get it out. We might be able to get everything all bolted up on the back end of the transmission there. Then we'll rotate it and try to get it kind of uh, temporarily mounted 
and lift it into place. And if we get that far today, I'll be really excited, but we're gonna give it our all. Too dirty. Okay. Wish I knew how this went together. So I know the advanced adapters, they sent me everything I need to install the Atlas onto this transmission. And it begins with this guy, which if I'm not mistaken, looks like it's not gonna work. It's like this. <laughs> okay, it's right. They know what they're doing. I don't, but that's fine. All right. So this here is our adapter plate. It has these uh, countersunk bolts that are gonna go into these bolt holes on the face of the transfer case, like so. Maybe that's a tight fit. And then the cool thing about the Atlas is that you can actually rotate this to the different bolt holes and so it can be clocked in a huge arrangement of different locations. So if you need your transfer case to sit exactly flat, you can set this uh, to the bolt holes that are actually gonna sit so that it's exactly flat. And if you're gonna need it to be, you know, clocked downward at an angle, you can clock this up so that it lands in a different spot. And then this will actually be a little bit lower than the actual bottom of the transmission. It's a really cool setup. The problem is I don't think I have all the bolts and I don't know exactly how this is gonna go. So my guess is I'm probably gonna put this together and take this apart about two or three times before we actually get it figured out on exactly how this needs to be mounted. And then once we do get it mounted, we're gonna have a struggle fest getting it underneath the truck in the right position. But I have faith, I think we can do it. I'm gonna read our one paragraph of instructions on how to do this and hopefully we'll be able to get it done. All right, so I've read the instructions a few times to make sure I'm not doing the wrong thing here and there's a bearing inside the tail shaft right here and this spud shaft has to go in and connect to the rear tail housing. It says some transmissions came with a bearing inside the tail housing and it has to be removed. The problem is this presses out forward. So now I have to remove the tail housing off of my brand new transmission that I just had rebuilt and probably gonna avoid my warranty by doing this because I'm opening up the case, but I don't really have another choice. I've got to take the tail housing off to get that bearing out, so it's just what I got to do. So I'm going to go ahead and separate that, then I got to clean the surfaces and re-silicone that thing back on. Hopefully this comes off easy and doesn't uh, cause a bunch of issues. The really good thing about not trying to tap it out is that there's a snap ring in there, so it should come off nice and easy. tight all of these bolts that are holding this in place but since this uh, transfer case can be clocked it can be rotated at different angles I'm kind of putting it at the angle that I think will work but we won't really know until we get our engine mounted and our transfer case and our transmission mounts made uh, to where we know whether this part of the transfer case is going to be clearing the body or not so I'm not going to red lock tight these on because I may have to change these Hopefully I remember to take this apart and red Loctite these before we go hit the trail because if these come undone, it could be catastrophic.
Okay, we're doing a lot of trial and error. I've read a couple different sets of instructions because to be honest, they just don't have it really set up very clear even on their website. And so I think I've got most of it figured out right now. Um, basically there's like these little blocks which allow the cables to be offset because in order to use this adapter plate that I have on here, the cable shifters can't be set up straight because they run into the adapter. So they have these little blocks that offset the shifter. Once we have all of these things bolted down and in place, I'll feel a little bit better about getting this mounted onto the transmission and then we'll move it into place, get it set up, get it pushed into its spot where we can actually figure out how big our motor mounts need to be and we can start making those. And that might be all the time we have for today because we've had a lot of uh, thinking and problem solving and trying to figure things out, but we are making some progress. I'm gonna have this done in a minute and then we'll get to the exciting stuff. I've got it pretty close. I'm gonna start playing with this uh, shifter box here that has the two shifters on it. And I'm gonna see if I can get the other end of these cables mounted into this box so that I can actually start playing with this and start trying to shift the transfer case uh, to see if I have clearance issues or if this setup will actually work. It feels really stiff and like there's some problems, so I might have to take it apart and redo it in a different configuration, which would not be fun. To be honest, I'm really just kind of taking some stabs in the dark. I'm looking at how these components go together and how they function, and I'm doing my best to kind of guess how this is all supposed to go. There are some photos online of like different configurations, but to be honest, they're not really making it very easy for me. Getting it figured out. Well, now that I've put this together about six times in the wrong configuration, I think we're finally figuring out how everything here is supposed to be mounted. I'm gonna finish getting the shifter installed, get the cables right here attached to the actual shifters. Then I should be able to run the transfer case through its gears, make sure everything's working. And if that's the case, we'll be able to get it put on the transmission and get back to step one. It's been a wild day. Now we've got our cable shifters set up here. I can actually shift and see the different, like this right here, that's front wheel drive. If I pull that shifter, that goes into four wheel drive. If I shift that shifter up, that puts me into rear wheel drive. If I shift both shifters up, I'm in neutral. That shifter goes forward. I'm in rear wheel drive. It is uh, actually kind of complicated, but I think I've got it figured out and I've got the shifter all mounted up, so that shouldn't be a problem. We're gonna try and get these cable shifters out of the way while we do this, but now we can finally take our Atlas transfer case and try to get it bolted up to our transmission. I'm a little nervous and I don't even know if it's clocked in the right position. I might have to take this back off a few different times before we're completely done. And we've spent probably about four hours out here trying to figure this out, but I think we've finally got it figured out. Now we're gonna try and manhandle this thing, get it bolted up to the transmission. If uh, you have good attention to detail, you can probably tell that I've taken the shifter cables off one more time, and that's because right before we were about to pick up the transfer case, and move it over to the transmission and get it bolted on. I said, you know, there is one more shifter that mounts right here. What do I gotta do with that? And so I've seen some previous transfer cases or previous versions of this transfer case where they had a bracket that bolted on on top of the transfer case right here and it had a lever that actually like actuated this uh, gearbox. This is a separate gearbox. So this is an Atlas four speed instead of an Atlas two speed, which is just this section. This extra gear reduction box right here gives you uh, an extra low range instead of just one low range, you get two low ranges and they compound each other and give you extreme gearing, which is needed for these enormous tires. I uh, looked in the little packet of things that they sent. And this bracket right here has to go on. Come on now. So that bracket right there, has to get mounted underneath 
our bracket right here that was holding our shifter cables. So, long story short, I had to take everything back off again. One more time, I am uh, taking this bracket off. I took all of my shifter cables off. Now I'm gonna reinstall everything and then we'll figure out this shifter cable which is gonna go on this portion, which it should be super simple because we've already done it seven times now. And when I'm done with that, we'll pick you guys back up. Every season till the end of the world, every moment, all the memories unfurl. Get my air hose, hook it up to this jack. We're gonna carry the Atlas over, set it on that jack, lift it up, get it to where it's actually gonna be in a space where we can mount it. And then we're gonna thread some of these bolts in and temporarily mount it and then maybe swing it underneath the truck and figure out kind of where it's gonna go. It's a little nerve wracking. It took us all day to basically put on that new output shaft, change out that seal, put on the adapter plate, and then figure out all the shifters. The shifters are a nightmare. So they are all done now. Everything's torqued down, everything's locked down, ready to go. I'm gonna grab the air hose and we'll throw this thing on. All right, we've got the transfer case attached to the transmission. The drive assembly, the whole powertrain is rotated into position. The engine and the transmission and the transfer case are all resting here. Um, we didn't really make that much progress today. We did get the transfer case out. We got it attached to the transmission. We got all the shifter cables done and all of that stuff, but I feel like it's more of a headache now than what we started with today, but that's totally fine. Hopefully in the next episode, I'm gonna be able to fix the knuckles and then maybe we can get some motor mounts so that I can actually lift this up, get it temporarily mounted to the frame rails and we can start working on a transmission mount, but uh, it's been quite a day. So if you guys enjoyed coming along on this adventure here, make sure you show me by giving a big thumbs up on today's video. Consider subscribing to this channel if you haven't already, and I will see you guys on the next one. But nothing ever stopped me from dusting off my shoes. You might think you'll see me.